<laughs> Bye, honey. We love you. Diamond City, the jewel of the Commonwealth. You find that heart that's gonna lead you to your boy. Oh, it's, it's bright. So bright against the dark alleys it walks. That's, that's what you need to do, kid. Follow the signs to the bright heart. Diamond City the Corrupt. I will not get help from the authorities here. The common people of Diamond City, they will be the ones to help me. I've met one person willing to help. You holding up, Luke? So that was a start. Why are you calling me that? Because you're a vault dweller? <laughs> I know you're not wearing the blue jumpsuit right now, but the pit boy and the fish out of water look. Dead giveaways. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. You do that, and uh, I'll tell you what. I'll come with you. Watch your back while you get used to the world above ground. What kind of interview is this going to be? I ask you who you are, get your opinion on life out there, and maybe load up a few tough questions and keep it interesting. What do you say? All right, Piper. I'm in. Good. Let's get down to business. So, I know you're from a vault. How would you describe your time on the inside? My family and I were frozen. I didn't spend much time in the vault. W wait. <laughs> they boxed you up in a fridge? The whole time? Are you saying you were alive before the war? Yes. I'm over 200 years old. Oh my god. The man out of time. So, you've seen the Commonwealth, Diamond City. How does it compare to your old life? Can you even compare the two? The world out here? It's not even close to the one I left. Feeling a little homesick, are we? Can't say I blame you. Now, I already know you're looking for your son, Sean. Do you suspect the Institute was involved in his kidnapping? A man took Sean, not some shadowy group. I hope that's true. Because if they are involved, everything gets worse. For the last part of our interview, I'd like to do something different. I want you to make a statement to Diamond City directly. The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? You can only take it one day at a time. Just keep going. That's all anyone can do. We're all just doing what we have to, huh? I think my readers can relate to that. That's everything. It's gonna take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is gonna give Diamond City plenty to talk about. Anyway, I agreed to come with you, right? Watch your back. Just say the word when you're ready. I can't wait to see where the story goes next. Diamond City, the new city that never sleeps. This place was not what I was expecting. Active. Thriving. I have not seen this many people since entering Vault 111. Mm -hmm. You'll get used to Diamond City security being unhelpful. Just ignore him like I do. Miss? Ever been up in the stands? Let's just say they can afford a lot of clothes. Do they know what the outside world is like? They hide behind these walls and act like the outside is not there. Even this place seems wrong. I follow directions down a dark alley. They believe you eat that food. Only one thing worth buying in the dugout inn. That's the booze. Trying to find a place I could rent a room for the night. The, real Diamond City boy eats at the, noodle the owners were colourful, but my years in the city have also shown me that they are loyal to anyone that they call friend, and I am lucky to be one of those people. But I would not have guessed it the first time I met them. Jesus birth? I killed a man for it. <laughs> no, no, I kid, I kid. <laughs> he is dead though. <laughs> now let me know when you're ready to order. So, this your bar? Damn straight it is. My brother Yefim and I make the best moonshine in the entire Commonwealth. We call it Bobrov's Best. 
Had to start renting out rooms just so customers uh, had a place to safely pass out after drinking. <laughs> I'll think about it. Some other time then. Oh, a customer. Need a room? All right, here's your money. You're in room two, just through the door. This place was not much to look at, but it was safe, and it was dry, and it offered a place to get a quiet night's sleep, alone with my thoughts for the first time. The city in the daylight could not have looked any more different. You could see that the buildings were built from nothing more than scrap, and held together with whatever people could get their hands on. The muddy floor barely being covered by wooden pallets. And then there was a warm Diamond City welcome for me, showing me the real paranoia in the city. Where's my brother? I swear I'm not a sin. Don't shoot, for God's sakes, we're family! Put the gun down, now! He's a sin! He'll kill us all! Kyle, no! Okay, show's over. There are no sins in Diamond City, hear me? The city security put that man down with no hesitation. This was not a free city, this city was run with an iron fist. There a problem, officer? Oh, don't even start with me. I got a dead body in the middle of the damn street. Now follow orders and get out of here. Nothing to see here. Paranoia. It was everywhere. But who could blame them? Hey. He pulled a gun on me. My own brother. What happened? I'm, I'm not a synth. I, I told him. I, I kept telling him. Why didn't he listen to me? I, uh, I need a minute. Who could blame them for being so paranoid? Never truly knowing if the person you've known for years was in actual fact a synth. I would like to address the subject that is on I was just in time for the mayor's speech, the spreading some more propaganda. Diamond City has stood united for over 150 years. And what keeps us united are two things. First is the great green guardian behind me, the wall, our protector and our savior from the filth of the outside. And second is our faith and trust in each other, the faith and trust that has given us prosperity, security, and education for every citizen. And while the paper might point their fingers at synths and other ghost stories to drive us apart, we will not betray this sacred trust. Now, I want everyone to hear these next words very carefully. I am not a synth. I am the same flesh and blood boy who grew up on these streets, who was born in a shack just down the waterfront to Martha and Patrick McDonough. And I will not abandon my city due to the anus allegations of the press. God bless this city. God bless the wall. Telling the citizens exactly what they wanted to hear and to tell them just enough to stop them from asking questions. I'd walked every street of this city and was no closer to finding this Detective Valentine. The bright heart. No reason for bothering me. I ain't buying anything. The bright heart that leads the way. Mama Murphy, you were right. I had found him. If anyone could help me, it would be him. But something was not right. The bills. Huh. Forget the bills. Something wrong? Another stray coming in from the rain. Afraid you're too late. Office is closed. Wait, who are you? You the detective? Me? No, I'm Nick's secretary. Handle his appointments, his papers, that sort of thing. Well, that's what I used to do anyway, but now Nick's disappeared and I can't keep a detective agency open without a detective. Do you have any idea how I could find him? He disappeared working a case. Skinny Malone's gang had kidnapped a young woman, and he tracked them down to their hideout in Park Street Station. There's an old vault down there they use as a base. 
I told Nick he was walking into a trap, but he just smiled and walked out the door like he always does. Who's this Skinny Malone character? I don't know much about him, but he's from Good Neighbor, and that means he's in the well-pressed suits and machine gun school of thuggery. You said Malone's from Good Neighbor? Yeah, it's a tough neighborhood. Northeast of ways. People with power there care about two things, style and body count. I'll find him. You have my word. Thank you. Nick should be easy to spot. He's always wearing that old hat and trench coat getup. Please, hurry. So, before the detective could help me find my son, I would have to help find the detective. And I would need some help. Some help from someone who owes me a favor. And I'm sure she would be a great this help. stays hidden forever. At least, not if I have my say. Piper. Heading my way? You sure you want to travel with me? Well, it's that, or get back to writing the paper. I guess the paper can wait. Sure, let's go. Will do. It's big, loud, full of corrupt officials and brown-nosing citizens, but it's home. At the time, I did not share Pippa's view of the city. This could never be my home, could it? It was too corrupt, but nowhere is beyond saving. Diamond City would just need help from people like me. People from the outside to remove this corruption and help make it the real jewel of the Commonwealth. I was once again walking the streets of Boston, but for the first time since leaving Sanctuary, I was not alone. The city was in a bad way, signs of war everywhere, old raider barricades half torn down, left over from when the gangs were forced to retreat. and gunfire everywhere. Some of the city security were fighting off a pack of wild dogs. Coward. We moved in to help, but they were able to look after themselves. I had not been able to get fresh meat in days, though this was far from fresh, when cooked it would do, and warm food in your stomach would make any day feel better. As we moved to the edge of the city barricade, we could see a turret firing upon something, and then exploding. There was a shop just outside the city limits, and it was under attack. With the raider down, me and Piper moved forward to see if there was anyone else around. I could sense we were not alone. Piper held back as I sneaked forward. My skills at being able to remain undetected had improved almost daily. And when I was able to spot the second raider, she had no idea I was there, giving me the chance to move forward and get the right shot. She was attacking a caravan Brahmin trying to steal its items. She did not notice me at all. The third raider did see me as he ran towards me with his sword drawn. The fool, he brought a sword to a gunfight. And now it was time for the dead to start rising up. As long as you were prepared for this moment, it should not be a problem. But if you forget just once, that could be your last mistake. 
we were still not alone. The last two raiders had not turned, but I could still sense that there was someone else about. We would just need to work out where they would be coming from. And as the raider's voice echoed off the buildings, this would not be easy. She appeared from around the corner and was not interested in us at all. She was too busy firing at the Brahmin to notice me lining up my shots. As I downed her, some of her friends got up and needed our attention before we could head off to kill the rest of the gang. It was not hard to find the raider hideout. They were not known for being subtle. What the fuck was that? And we soon realized the hideout was not empty. I had time to place my shot and my accuracy with rifles meant I could not miss. There was still one more to deal with. and then the base was cleared. We returned back to the shop that was under attack to see if everybody was okay and to find out what they had for sale. Welcome to the best attire store in the Commonwealth. I'm Ellie and that's Elijah. He's the dangerous one, I'm the talented one. I'm good at outfits, bad with people. So, you buying or what? What kind of things do you sell? Clothes I mashed up, combined, scavenged, and made look amazing. I also have a schematic for a custom clothing workbench, and some notes about armor designs, if you're interested. And I specialize in vault suit modifications. Sure, let's take a look. This is what I have. There was at least one thing I was interested in. It was expensive, but the quality was amazing. It looked brand new. The backpack was small, but would at least help with carrying my medical supplies and some food. It was already the afternoon, and we had made little progress making it to the station where Mr. Valentine was being held. We would need to move fast through the streets of Boston to make it before dark. The sound of gunfire in the distance brought us to a large open building. Piper had told me that outside Diamond City, if you come across a robot you don't take the chance, you put it down before it puts you down. Most robots had gone mad or just been reprogrammed. These zombies were full of holes. It seemed the robot killed the settlers and the raiders, and then when they turned, killed the zombies as well. But this gave me the chance to fill my new bag up with supplies. Before once again heading on. The old military personnel carrier was abandoned at the edge of the park. One time this would have been full of weapons, but it had been looted a long, long time ago. Blue. We're walking right into Boston Commons. People don't come back from here. Piper was fearful of this place, and with good reason. Boston Commons was once home to lovely swan boats that would go across the pond, but this place was now home to something far more terrible than the little swans it was once famous for. We moved around the outside of a raider base. 
Piper wanted us to make no noise, through fear of waking something up in the pond, so we kept our distance and moved away from the raiders. A strange sign in the park at the start of a trail. I would not go on to complete that path for a long, long time. We had made it to the station that Mr. Valentine was last seen heading to. I hoped to find clues about his whereabouts, if not Nick himself. We soon found out the station was not empty, and this was where we needed to be. I'm telling you, joining Skinny Malone's crew was the best decision we've ever made. Look at this place. I still say Malone's weak. We caught that detective snooping around, and what does he do? Locks him up. Like he ain't got the balls to just kill him. Well, don't let his new girl hear that. She'll start swinging that bat of hers at your face until there ain't no face left. Well, let's go get Mr. Valentine then. Thank you all for listening to my tale. Please like if you did. Subscribe to never miss a video. Please comment below or on Facebook or Twitter with all the links in the description. I am Sean Insane in the game and this was Fallout 4 and I hope to see you all one day in the safe zone.